Mike from Minnesota. Mike from Minnesota. That's nice. That's the other Canada. Yeah. <laughs> Where Canada is the other Minnesota. Well, good morning. We're in Missoula, Montana, and today we're going to head towards Elk City, Idaho, and Grangeville, Idaho. And that's going to be about 300, 320 kilometers, maybe more. So, a uh, good day of riding, uh, hopefully. The skies are looking clean and clear, uh, so that part is looking awesome. And there we go. Let's have a great day today. We're leaving Missoula, Montana. It's a beautiful morning. Well, here we are in Darby, Montana. I would have made it here last night, except it was kind of chilly and Missoula was closer, so Missoula won out. Some nice historic buildings. Nice western motif. Yeah, really nice. Derby. 406 Saloon. Library bookstore. Well, thought I'd get both sides of the street for you. It's quite a quaint little place. Loon. Yeah. Montana has a lot more open terrain. This is uh, looking east where Connor Cutoff Road. Let's see what that's like. Activity. All roads open. That's good news. That's our beautiful road. I'm liking it. Very smooth. That's a nice curvy section. Kind of makes me feel like I'm in the in the um, mountains in California, near Los Angeles. Only I've got an enduro. Beautiful curvy road. I guess if you can't have dirt, curves. <laughs> I love it. So the issue is every time you get in the mountains or anywhere away from a city here, um, it seems like there's no cell phone coverage, which limits everything because uh, without that, you don't have the ability to check the weather. You can't get in contact with people to say, hello, how's it going? You know, make you feel a little more at ease with loneliness. Uh, you can't check about hotels, weather, friends, family. Definitely can't send off any emails or videos. Doesn't mean you can't work on them. On the videos at least. Everything else has to wait. 
in some ways it's good you get disconnected from everything you know and then you come back you come back and you look at your emails after a day or two and you're like holy crap there's like 24 25 emails and really uh, most of it is junk and I should find a way to block all that stuff so to, just to get rid of it because all it does is consume your time to to look at it and even to click it and say oh I gotta click this get rid of it but it occupies your brain it occupies your time it makes impressions on you you should get rid of all that stuff I'm gonna work on that in 6,587 feet. Oh, guess what? Did the clock change? Not yet. You're in Idaho. Now you're in Montana. And now you're in Idaho again. <laughs> well, hello, Idaho. You're back. And this side of the mountain's colder. Just like that. Boom. I don't feel like I'm going to warm up a little bit. I think I'll put a layer on that happens uh, if you don't know is that it might feel a little cool at first but after a while it's dropping your core temperature down and you don't even know it but you're setting in for like this chill that you can't seem to recover for quite some time I mean it's not like bone chilling cold it's probably by the feel of it it's probably like anywhere between I don't know maybe 13 degrees Although that might seem warm, uh, when you've got a wind chill, put a 50 kilometer an hour wind on yourself, which is what you're doing when you're driving through here, or actually 50 miles an hour, 40 to 50 miles an hour. Yeah. So you're doing 40 or 50 mile an hour wind is what you're doing. You're creating your own wind chill. I think this is a good bend. This is a good bend I could be seeing here from behind. It's most, most the biggest one. I just took off the insulation layer because, man, this side of the mountain is hot and beautiful. Oh, it's sweet. Now, I would like to get to Elk City and see what the story is. And uh, I looked last night for accommodations just to see, and there was I didn't see anything, but that could just be because there are smaller guys that aren't on, you know, on the internet platforms like um, Agoda and Expedia. But there is accommodations down the road, 40, 50 kilometers, like something like that, at Grangeville. Something last night sushi was excellent i really enjoyed it uh the only thing they were missing they could have really they could use a mango uh maki one of my favorites but uh it was really nice to have uh good sushi the lady there working there was from hokkaido northern part of japan one day i'll get there anyways i would like to get there at reasonable time today oh, it would be awesome if they had if they had cell phone coverage. <laughs> so they had cell phone coverage and I could look at the weather and I could take an estimate about, you know, like what's the temperature gonna be like tonight? 
if tonight's temperature was around 9 or 10 degrees Celsius, I think I'd go pit the hammock and enjoy it. Getting much lower than that, um, I know guys do it, man, my friend Mark does it out in Nova Scotia with the frickin' snow. <laughs> Hats off to you, Mark. Uh, but not for me, that's just a little too cold. I don't have a fire or anything like that, so I'm just sleeping away. And I'm, I'm only finding, I'm not finding my core cold at all. What I'm finding is that my feet, my feet get cold. That's the biggest one. And then my knees, and, uh, and it works their way up. But the red, like my core is cooking, you know, like around my chest and around my head and everything. That part's all no problem whatsoever. That part's nice and warm. Maybe I'm, maybe my core is too warm and and uh, my feet are sweating or something like that. I did find like after, I think lower than, I think around seven degrees, less than seven degrees Celsius, it just started feeling too cold. You don't get a, like a, you don't sleep through it. It's okay if it's a little cool out because I'm okay with cool. Hopefully there's there's rooms. Of course, if there's not, well, I uh, I throw out the hammock and I I tough it out like a good Canuck. So I think we're going to take that road that cuts along there. I think that's where I'm going. Goes there and around the mountain, I guess. Not sure if you can see that or not, but. Uh, observation point up here. Oh. Good, yourself? Oh, what are you spotting? Nothing yet, eh? How long does it normally take for you to find something? I don't know. That's what we are <laughs> I guess so, eh? Is there a lot of elk up here? Uh, Normally? I think that is the elk somewhere. He's been running all over the place. We haven't seen much. There's another guy over there. He hasn't seen nothing. So, they're out there. Never there. Yep, heading for a ride down to Argentina. Oh, yeah? Yeah. That sounds awesome. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I gotta get away for winter for a change. Yeah? Yeah. No, I'm from uh, Vancouver, Canada. Okay. Well, uh, me and my two buddies are from Minnesota. For, oh, you're a little ways from home too, then, aren't you? Yep. Further than I am. A little bit. How long are you going to be out here? Uh, until Friday, I think. Friday. Go right home. How long you been here? Yeah, yeah, last Tuesday. That's a long drive for one week. Oh, there are elk in Minnesota, but you can't hunt them. Well, that's all right. It's a beautiful view. Maybe I'll uh, just take a. I'll take a view. It's a shame the forest fire did so much, but I don't know when it was. But uh, a couple weeks ago, there were a bunch of fires out here, but the rain killed it. Oh, uh, but all of this, this is mo that's longer than. Oh, this is done here. Right off, if you would have, if you would have taken the right. Yeah. Up that road heading to the kind of north. Yeah. The fire was right there. Oh, really, yeah? Yeah, I've been through a lot where I can smell them all the way down through here. But this one's older. You can tell by the size of the trees down there. That's 20 years, 30 years out there. What's your name? Mike. Mike from Minnesota. Mike from Minnesota. That's nice. That's the other Canada. Yeah. <laughs> where Canada's the other Minnesota. Yeah. What's your name? Darcy. Darcy? Yeah. Darcy from Vancouver. Yep. All right, I have a... I got a bike. I haven't ridden it much since I had kids. But. Yeah, they'll do that to you. <laughs> Until you get them into it. How old are they? Uh, 14 and 12. 14 and 12. Oh, that's the perfect age. You get them a little, like a little 80 or something like that. That's good. Uh, that's around the age my dad got me, a, back in the day, a Trail 70. Oh, yeah? Man, we loved that little thing. You know, like you didn't need a clutch. It was just an automatic. Yeah. Yeah, it was fantastic, man. 
And that was the that's when the love affair started. It was like, oh, this is so much fun. You know what? Kids don't need a lot of hard trails. We used to drive drive in the city wherever there's rolling hills. We were just happy, you know. Yeah. Didn't get on any golf courses because we weren't that bad. But you know, <laughs> nowadays I think they would do that. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry to disturb you. No worries. And uh, have yourself a great one, Mike. You too. Stay uh, stay safe. Keep the rubber down. Yeah, for sure. All right, have a good one, Mary. Sue. Your kids will thank me for getting you getting them a bike. Yeah. <laughs> I'm telling you, I really appreciate my dad got me one. I was like, I didn't think about it till a lot later, but you know, here I'm in my 50s, and I'm like, Dad, thanks, man. That was so awesome. Yeah, that's a recent forest fire for sure. Yeah, you can still smell. You can still smell the burnt, the ash. Yeah, it's grim. Oh, it's very, it's kind of spooky actually, like the death of a, of a forest. I suppose it's going to regenerate. There's a gas station. My light has been flashing. Come into this place. Man. $13. That's my most expensive gas fill yet. Well. Uh, finally got in. It's uh, 7 p.m. That was a long drive today. Uh, probably about eight hours of riding. I'm in Grangeville, Idaho. It's off of the BBR, just past Elk City. Not just past, but like 28 miles past it. Anyways, got the last room in town. Lucky me. And uh, let me show you the... Let me show you what that looks like. Yeah, so it's your basic. Um, it's got everything, place for my stuff. It's got a little kitchenette, which I won't even use. Go to washroom. Beautiful is that they've got phone coverage here. So I will be making some phone calls tonight and doing some editing. Hey, thank you for watching. Uh, give me a thumbs up if you liked it. Uh, please subscribe so that uh, you catch all the shows that are coming up. Tomorrow we'll just keep this call to ride on going. And now I'm going to put my glasses on.